Hi, welcome to Terry's Homestyle Cooking. I'm Terry, and what we do here is a healthier version of homestyle cooking. It's the same thing that your mother cooked in the kitchen. We add some international spices and give you a little bit of a different flair to our old home favorites. You can find us at www.itsallgoodcatering.com. You can also find, send us an email if you'd like at itsallgoodcatering at yahoo.com. We're going to do some baked quail. We're going to add in some string beans, some sweet potatoes just to give it a nice little flavor there. And then we're going to do a nice little lightweight dessert. The lightweight dessert is going to be a graham cracker crust with a whipped cream with some pineapple and some fresh fruit on top. It's going to be absolutely delicious. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to getting started and doing some cooking. We're going to do some baked quail today. And we have these wonderful little birdies here. So we're going to put them here in the middle of the dish. And then we're going to add our vegetables around it. Here we're going to add some carrots to it, some string beans. This is going to be a whole meal in a pan. Once you finish cooking this, you will be able to put it out on the dish, out on, out on the table, and you have enough food for three people. We're going to add some mushrooms, nice little variety of color here. I like to add color to my food and give us a little bit of everything in it. Now the sweet potatoes, the sweet potatoes here, they're already cut up. They're gonna add a nice little hint of flavor, a little hint of sweetness, not much, because we're not adding the brown sugar and everything to it. But this will give you a nice little flavor, a nice little contrast to the meat and also to the string beans and mushrooms. Between the, the carrots and the sweet potatoes, you have nice color and you also have a nice little hint of sweetness. This is bok choy. Just cut it up. Wash it off real good because it tends to kind of hold on to the dirt. So you want to wash it really good. And then I just chopped it up. Most people will use this in a soup, but it gives a nice little texture to your food. Plus it's really good in the vitamin section. Now I've already gone ahead and cut up this ginger for peeled it so it's peeled and ready for us to use I'm just going to cut it up and this is just going to put some more flavor into our food now we have all of this in here it looks really pretty so now we're going to add the flavor this time I'm not even going to add any individual spices we're going to have some fun here I have some sake yes we're going to put some sake in here. I'm going to add about a third of a cup of sake. With a third of a cup of sake, we're going to give it a nice stark contrast with some red wine vinegar. The red wine vinegar will just help not only tenderize, but it will add some additional flavor to this. And the balsamic vinegar, a nice strong contrast. Notice we have things that have strong flavor they're also going to tenderize your meat. They're going to bring out the natural flavor in your vegetables. And then we're going to give it a nice little kick, just a little bit, not much, from some spicy mustard. The spicy mustard, I personally love spicy mustard, so I use it quite frequently in almost everything I do. But we're going to put a couple little chugs up in there of the spicy mustard. And of course, my favorite, garlic. Life is not right if we do not have garlic. This will stir up nicely. So you're gonna blend it all up in here together. And once we mix it up, we're gonna pour it over the top of this. And then we're gonna add some water. We don't want it to overpower us, but see how brown that is? That's gonna be nice and tasty. And then we're gonna add a little bit of water because one thing we do not want it to do while it's in the oven is to dry out. Now we're going to add the two cups of water and you're just going to gently pour it and look at that. It's filling up quickly. I'm not going to even add two cups. It looks like I actually got about a cup of water in there. That's going to be just perfect. You don't need to do anything else. We're going to put some foil over the top of it, throw it in the oven, and it will be done in about three hours. 
So this is definitely something you want to give yourself some time for it if you're cooking this for company. You want to make sure that you give yourself plenty of time to cook this. You do not want to serve this underdone. So give yourself at least three hours so that when you pull it out of the oven, it is nice and hot and ready to serve and your guests will love you. Put it in the oven and cook it for about three hours or at least until you can put a fork in the quail and turn it. I'm really excited about this. We're gonna do the fruit whip pie. Nice, simple, cold dish. Very easy to make. It is whipped cream and fruit. We put in, we're gonna put it in a graham cracker crust. Now with the graham cracker crust today, I am not treating the graham cracker crust because I don't want it firm and crispy which you would get if you coat it with butter, put it in the oven and bake it for about five minutes. We're not gonna do that. We're just gonna leave it as is straight from the store. No, I didn't make them myself. These are some of the things we'll cheat and get it done so that it helps you do it quicker and actually to enjoy making something like this. We're gonna use some whipped cream, pineapple, strawberries, blackberries, and raspberries. Use seasonal fruit. This just happens to be what's available to me right now, so this is what I use. With that, let's go ahead and take a look at what this comes and starts out. So first we have the whipped cream, and we have fresh pineapples mixed up in here. We're gonna just stir it up real good and get it mixed up together. I happen to have two containers because we have people here who like sweets. So I knew that I dared not just make one pie. We're gonna actually, you could probably do this with one container of whipped cream, one small can of crushed pineapples, and you see how it mixes together quite nicely, very easily. The pineapples will not allow you to do it and have it smooth just because you have the lumps of fresh pineapple in there. We're going to take it now and spoon it into the graham cracker crust. We're just going to pour it in. And just smooth it out a little bit. Let's go ahead and put some in the next one. And then we'll even this out between the two of them. It looks like this one's going to be a little higher, so we'll put some more in the other one. Get it nice and all the way to the edge. Let's have some fun with the strawberries and raspberries. We're gonna kind of mix it up so that it gives us a nice little pretty topping. We'll do a blue, a blackberry, sit it up on there, and then a strawberry, and then a raspberry. And you just wanna kind of mix it up, and then just make it nice and pretty. It gets nice and colorful. You can mix it up any way you'd like. We'll put a little bit more on there after we see how much we have left. And just like I said, have some fun with it. You can stand the strawberries up, and look at that. They actually stand up in the whipped cream, and then you're just gonna sit it in the refrigerator for a little while, and just let it set. Nice and colorful, nice and simple meal, um, excuse me, nice and simple dessert. Just something to have some fun with. You have flavor in every bite, you get fruit in every bite. A lot of fun, really good, nice, quick, and fast. Terry's Homestyle Cooking. Today, we are going to have some fun with some jambalaya. We're going to take it down south in New Orleans style. We're going to do some jambalaya, and then we're going to do some seafood salad, and some garlic cheesy grill. It's one of those things that just tops it off very nicely. You'll be able to get this recipe, along with any others that you see on my shows, at www.itsallgoodcatering.com. And you can send me an email, tell me what you did, how you thought, how you thought it tasted, when you fixed it, what you did differently, any information you want to give me, I can be reached at it's all good catering at yahoo.com. We're going to start off with some jambalaya. We're going down south, New Orleans style. And we're going to put something together here that will just tantalize your taste buds and get you at all angles. We're going to do some sausage. We have some sausage. 
with an oyster filling in there too, oyster flavoring. We have shrimp, so we'll saute the shrimp. We'll get this, uh, the sausage out of the skin, ball it up and saute it a little bit in the pan, cook it before we add it into the jambalaya. Then we have the garlic and all the flavorings We'll do some seafood salad, and then we'll do some garlic cheese and bread. Delicious meal. Let's start this off to get this going. We're gonna go ahead and take this out of the skin. The skin tends to be a little bit hard. It just really ruins everything. Sometimes I use beef sausage. Sometimes I use, this one is a combination of pork sausage. Sometimes I use links and I just slice them up and I still like to put them in the pan. My mother calls it putting the funk in your food. At least that's what she used to call it. But it is really good. It's one of those all-in-one dishes that you get to play with and you can always add your own flair to it. We have a few little balls in here. We're gonna go ahead, that gets it out of the skin, makes it a lot easier to eat. You don't have to worry about cutting through the skin and dealing with all that hassle. So now we're gonna put this on the stove get this cooked up. And while this cooks up, we'll put it on a little medium. And while this is cooking, we just really want to brown it and get it cook, get it started cooking because the rice is already ready. We have a pot here, some rice. It's nice and fluffy and ready to use. We're going to start adding spices to this and get things sauteed and get them ready to go in here. We're going to keep this going here and stir it up just a little bit. Kind of so toss the pan around just so it doesn't stick. Give it time to get cooked a little bit. We have some shrimp here. Now sometimes I will get the full shrimp where I have to peel it and revein it. It's also easy for you. You can get the pre-packaged stuff that is not is already deveined for you so you don't have to worry about doing all that work. We're gonna turn this rice on. And we're going to start adding some spices to this rice. I'm just breaking it up a little bit so that it's ready to have things added to it. I actually do more of a fried rice when I make my rice. I fry it in a little bit of olive oil once I've done it so that it comes out looking like a, a, a pilaf. Then I will add water to it and cook it up that way. Makes it nice and separates it very easily. I'm going to add in now, I'm going to add in some Burberry. This is one of my favorite spices. I actually get this from my family in Ethiopia. Let's get some garlic in here. I love all things garlic. And as you see, I'm going to put a nice little healthy chunk of garlic in there. And ah, yes. The mitmata, this is mitmata. It actually is just a little bit, I don't want to add too much of that. I personally call it cayenne on crack. That lets you know that it really is super duper hot. This is a spice. We have some cumin, and we have some um, we have some cumin and garlic, and we have a lot of little things sitting here. I'm just adding some flavor in just so that we are ready for when the sausage comes out. We can put that in there. Then I'll clean the pan up, and we'll start with the um, we'll get the other stuff in there. Get some sautéed vegetables going. See how that looks? Doesn't matter that it's breaking up. You really just want to get some flavor in there and get some cooking done. So we'll let that cook for a little bit longer. And while that's cooking, we'll stir up this pot. We have some diced tomatoes. And we'll see if we need to add a little bit more later once we start adding all of this juicy goodness in here. And here we have the diced little chunky chunks of bell peppers and tomatoes and a little bit of jalapenos in there. Just enough to add some flavor. Now you're starting to build up your rice. So it looks like we can add just a little bit more of both of those in there. Because you definitely want to have it nice and juicy, full of all kinds of goodness. We'll just add all of that in there. But I am not gonna add all of this the bell peppers and chunky salsa. That's a little bit enough right there. Now we're gonna add the sausage. As you see, it is nice and well done. We're gonna add it in here. And it's in chunks. Don't wanna add in the grease, so I'm just spooning it out. You see how good that's looking so far? 
We said to add the shrimp in and then we'll let it simmer for a little bit and it'll be ready to go. The last thing we're gonna go we're gonna get into the pan is the shrimp and the green onions. In the meantime, we're gonna put just a little bit of butter, not much, into the pan so that we don't have it burn. We're gonna add some green onions. Give us a nice bit of color to contrast with the rice and the red tomatoes and all that fun stuff. And then we're going to add the shrimp in there. And we're just going to add a little bit of spice in there. And we're just going to let it cook for about five or ten minutes. When you spice things separately, spicing the shrimp and the green onions, along with the spices that I threw there. Notice that I didn't use the same spices, but I did add some spice to it. So when you bite into the shrimp, you'll have a different flavor than you would have from when you bite into the sausage and the rice. So it gives another dimension to your food to have some fun with it, to make people's mouth just go, ooh. You'll notice that it's nice big shrimp. Some people will cut it up. I personally like to have nice big shrimp in my, in my jambalaya. So you'll notice that it's already starting to pinken. And that's your sign that it's being cooked. We're going to let it simmer for a little while. And we'll let that go ahead and sa saute for a little bit. I've taken the rice off the, off the burner, but we're going to bring it back and get that ready. And as it starts simmering, we're gonna put it all together. It's gonna to be really delicious. So let's stir this rice up real good. Make sure it's not sticking while the shrimp is sauteing. And that should be pink and ready to eat, ready to throw into the, the jambalaya. And give it about five minutes and that'll be ready to go. Wow, the kitchen is full of smells right now. Look at that shrimp. Doesn't that look good? We're going to add it in. And then we're going to stir this all up. Let it simmer. Well, we have the jambalaya cooking on the stove. Now it is time to start the seafood salad. Now this seafood salad that I'm going to do today is a really simple, basic seafood salad. You can do a lot of different things with this. You can start it up with pasta, add in pasta to it, different kinds of pasta noodles, it doesn't matter which one. You can add pasta to it, you can add lettuce, you can have a grand old time with this. It's great over bread, it's great over, over crackers. Have a good time. And we're going to saute everything in the, in the saute pan, add it into the bowl. It comes out hot. You refrigerate it if you want it chilled out. So with that, let's get the stove turned on and let's get some cooking going. We don't want the stove turned on high. We want it on medium to low. We don't want it to cook real long, but we just want to add some little ink to it. Got my bowl to mix everything in. We're going to put a little bit of butter in the pan here. Crab tends to take a whole lot of work to get that out of there. And I just decided that I would use imitation crab in my meat, in my seafood salad. So we have the butter melting. Roll it around in the pan. Get that whole bottom of the pan taken care of. Makes it nice and simple. Then we're just going to add the crab meat in here and let it sit in here for just about two or three minutes. Just long enough to take the chill off of it, add some spices to it. And once we add some spices to it, yes, I add spices to it. We want to give it some flavor. Remember, this crab meat tends to be a little sweet. So you don't want to add too much to it, but you want a hint of flavor, a hint of fire. We can also add some of the, um, that mixture with the, the, um, the bell peppers and salsa. You can add some of that in there. We're going to stir it up. And we're just going to get it started here. Because you want it to, when, when food is hot, it tends to take in the spices much better than it does when it's cold. 
So like I said, sometimes I serve this cold and sometimes I serve it hot. I personally like it warm. So, there's the crab meat. Now we're gonna add a little bit more butter in here and we're gonna put in not only the, not only the shrimp, but we're gonna add in some green onions as well. Remember what I said before about adding in different spices with different foods. That way you end up having a variety of flavors in your food and a variety of levels of, of, of flavor. So once again, we're gonna make sure we get that butter melted all the way around in the pan. We're gonna put the shrimp in there and then we'll add the green onions. And now, of course, I want some garlic. You know me and my garlic. And I want just a hint of some black currant. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up. We want this to go ahead and soak in that flavor. And like I said, it gives it another little level of flavor. And the green onions make it look real pretty. Something to contrast in color. I like to add things, you know, bell peppers, green onions. I like to add stuff like that because it really gives you some nice flavor in your foods first. But second of all, it actually makes it nice and pretty. As you notice with this one, this is the baby shrimp and they're already cooked. So it doesn't take a lot of work on either one of these dishes. Like I said, this is something that's quick, fast, and easy. If you want to add some pasta to it, you can. It is just really well appreciated. Everybody that I know of, that every time I make this, people just absolutely love it. Let's see how that mixes up. That's why I like the green onions in there. And no, I didn't cook them long. I wanted to go ahead, I still want that little bit of crunchiness to the green onions. We're gonna add some relish. Now I'm using sweet relish mainly because, like I said, the crab meat tends to be on, a little on the sweet side. I'm gonna add some sour cream. Now I'm not gonna add a lot, but it's something that kind of just gives it a nice little richness. Now if you are sticking with doing a healthier diet, you might wanna stay away from the ranch and also the sour cream, which this is ranch that I'm adding as well. Notice not a lot, just enough to keep it from being from being dry. We're gonna add a little bit of spicy mustard to it because this gives it a nice little, mm, okay? Not making it hot, not making it spicy, but just adding another level of flavor. And then you mix it up. But we have the seafood salad done. We have the jambalaya done. Now it's time for the garlic cheesy bread. Okay, I know I keep telling you we're doing things healthy, so, well, garlic cheesy bread is not exactly healthy, but it sure is good, and it really goes very well with stuff like jambalaya. And this is something, there are two different ways of doing this, and all we're going to do is butter and cheese, and of course, garlic. We're going to take garlic nice mound of garlic. We're going to add it in to this butter here. Nice generous amount. And then what I want to do as well is add in just a little bit of, this is a little bit of a salty, it has just a little bit of salt, not much, just a little bit because otherwise it, ends, it tends to be a little bland. Then we're going to mix this all up. And I just use a fork, because a fork helps it blend really well. And you notice it's just a push and a swish. Get it all stirred up in there and mixed up. The good thing about this is that you can tell when it's all mixed up well, because it all is the same color. Simple. So, once we get this mixed up, we're going to spread it generously over the bread. I don't use a lot of it normally. As you see, even though I'm generously applying it here, it still is not super, super, super duper over buttery. Just enough to get it over all of the bread so that all of the bread has some garlic flair to it. So, as you see, we have enough there right now. And now I'm gonna take some cheese. 
I usually get the grated cheese. I like to do the mixture. I, want, I don't want just one flavor of cheese. I like to do the, um, the Mexican mix or the taco blend, something that has a variety of cheeses in it. I don't want to add too much, but I do want to try to get it all the way to the end. So, we'll put it on this cookie sheet, get it under the broiler. It doesn't take long. You just want to melt down the cheese on it, give it a nice little golden color, oops, a nice little golden color. So instead of making a mess, I better pick it up with two hands. See how that looks? I've already set the broiler on, and I'm going to put it in here on the top shelf. And I'm just going to keep an eye on it. By the time I finish cleaning up the kitchen, the bread will be ready, and we'll be ready to sit down and eat. Ah, yes. So, let's take this off. We'll get it onto the cutting board and move this pan out the way so that we can go ahead and cut it up. Very simple, I like to do it when it's hot. And of course, you know, very few cooks have fingers tips so we don't burn them very easily. And I can go ahead and do this. Look at that, you guys. Wait till you taste this. I really wanna know what you think about this bread. But I'm telling you, I get to sneak a bite. Mm. Just like I thought it would be. We have the jambalaya. Then we have some seafood salad. And of course, a piece of bread. Mmm. <laughs> well, that's really good. So, go ahead, go to the website, get the recipe, and drop me a line at it's all good catering at yahoo.com. I look forward to hearing from you and saying what you did and how it tasted to you.